Michigan's in the process of finding its next head coach now that Jim Harbaugh is back in the NFL. And if you're Ward Manuel, the obvious thing to do would be walk across the hall, knock on Sharon Moore's office and say, hey man, we're going to promote you. We're going to move your stuff and we're going to have a press conference tomorrow naming you the Wolverines next head coach. We know you're going to do wonders here. Best of luck. Go blue. That's the easy thing to do, but that's never the case in college football. And the name that keeps being brought up in conversations whenever it comes to the Wolverines job is LSU's Brian Kelly. Should he take the job if offered or is he in the best location possible? Let's go ahead and discuss, but if you are new here, welcome on into the channel, people. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston and I talk college football daily. I get it. The season's come to a close. We're looking forward to 2024, but we got the off season planned and I'm here to keep you entertained. We'll be recapping 2023, a look ahead to next season, making some dumb, bold predictions, any kind of questions you want answered, I'm going to do videos on. So if this is the type of content you need to survive the dreaded off season of college football, might I recommend that you smash that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment telling me your thoughts. Should Brian Kelly stay at Baton Rouge or should he head on up to Ann Arbor? Tell your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros, LSU faithful, Michigan fans, and college football aficionados everywhere about this channel because we are on the race to become the number one YouTube show talking college football daily. And we're going to get there. So jump on in while the water's fine. Go ahead and follow me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson. That way, conversations surrounding our favorite sport never have to stop flowing. Okay, so Sharon Moore is the favorite to replace Jim Harbaugh after taking over for four games this past season. Did a phenomenal job. The toughest games of Michigan's schedule came with Moore at the helm. And that's more so a testament to what this locker room was about. I've preached it time and time again, and I'll continue to preach it. When you are built to be a championship caliber program, you basically use coaches as babysitters. They take over the persona. They take over the findings. They take over everything that unfolds on the field, and they act like leaders from the second that they enter the locker room that morning until they walk out and go home at night. That's the way championship teams are built. So more coming in was simply being the glorified babysitter, but he did a lot of good. Beat Maryland. Beat Penn State beat Ohio State, and was able to get convincing wins that set you up for a national championship run. And you also had the game of the star of the year against Bowling Green. So you did good, but you're always going to look at outside names. Brian Kelly is the first one that comes to mind. Lance Leipold at Kansas is going to get brought up. I don't think he's going anywhere. He didn't want the Washington job. He didn't want the Texas A&M job. He feels content in Lawrence. And Chris Kleiman's a really interesting guy because if he is a coach that has won national championships, at the FCS level. Done a good job in Manhattan. Is he willing to take an offer from Ward Manual? Ultimately, I don't think so. So it comes down to Brian Kelly. For Kelly, if you're a Michigan fan, you should be content with this move if it happens. I don't think it does, but let me just make it clear. If it does happen, you should be elated. Brian Kelly, in my opinion, is the number two coach in college football at this point. Nick Saban retired. Jim Harbaugh said, see you later. I'm going back to the NFL. So there was always going to be change in the pecking order. Most people had Kirby Smart at number two. So he moves up to number one. Most people had Jim Harbaugh at number three. Now he was going to move up to number two. Instead, the bronze statue, that goes to someone else. And the silver statue goes, in my opinion, to Kelly. Guy's a proven winner everywhere he's been. Grand Valley State, Cincinnati, Notre Dame, LSU. He's got the best results. He's also done wonders when it comes to reconstructing a roster. I don't think many people realize just what dismay LSU was in when he arrived back in 2022. This was a team that had 37 scholarship players on it. And all I did was he worked the transfer portal in his favor, added in more talent in the second wave, and then took his team on an epic run that went 10 and four and made it to Atlanta in year one underneath his watch. Yeah, the foghorn leghorn accent is definitely a thing that you have to get used to. But when you win games the way he does, how can you not think that he is worth it? And also, he hires great staff members everywhere he has been, whether it be Mike Denbrock, whether it be going and getting Marcus Freeman, he can build a staff that brings out the best version of this team. And he was able to do the exact same thing by getting Blake Baker to leave Columbia, Missouri and join another breed of Tigers down in Baton Rouge. There's a reason why I don't think he should take the job, plain and simple. Number one, what do you have at your disposal? LSU, Baton Rouge, Tiger Stadium, the fan base that bleeds the purple and yellow. There are not as many premier jobs outside of LSU and the SEC. And the rule of thumb for me has always been, if you have a premier job, sometimes good is good. 
You don't need to go for great. You don't need to go for elite because it's not always greener on the other side of the grass. There's always going to come moments and opportunities where you think that you're in a great spot and you want more and it ends up coming back and biting you in the ass. So a guy like Kelly has it made right now. Back-to-back 10-win seasons, if you include the bowl games, a young emerging quarterback that is committed to you and Garrett Nussmeyer, a veteran quarterback that comes on over to add quality competition with a guy in A.J. Swan. You went out and you added in a premier wide receiver in the transfer portal in C.J. Daniels from Liberty. You brought over a new defensive coordinator, which automatically is going to do wonders for your team. You still have a young emerging roster. Veterans still on staff that should be difference makers from the jump. You also brought in some players via the transfer portal. Oh, and you have the number one recruiting class going into 2025. That's not following you to Ann Arbor. Some will. Not everyone, though. Some will come. But most are going to stay in Louisiana. So you have it pretty well off. And also, you're in a great location when it comes to the recruiting prowess and when it comes to the standard set in the SEC. You're going to be a top three team. You're going to be a favorite to win the SEC. You're going to be a favorite to make the college football playoff. You're in good standing. You have it made down in Baton Rouge. So why go for better? Why try to expand on what is already great? Why not just be content with where you are? The other thing that's really important here on the flip side for Michigan, Michigan right now has an MO of being right back in the situation next season. They plan on finding their way through the Big Ten, navigating through frigid waters with newcomers like USC, with Washington, with Oregon all coming in. Plus you got Penn State. Plus, you got Ohio State. Ohio State's been killing it in the transfer portal. They are built like a number one team, and they want to act like it. You still are the new MO and the face of the Big Ten. So how do you make sure that you keep as much morale as high as possible? You hire Sharon Moore. This roster may not all play for Moore. They may some say, I committed to Jim Harbaugh. I was here for Jim. Only Jim. But a lot of them will say, I'm here to play for Coach Moore. That man was willing to run through a wall with us when our coach was on the sidelines back at home, and he was more than happy to go ahead and take command. He was more than happy to lead us out of the tunnel. He was more than happy to go ahead and get us ready for this game. He got us mentally prepared, physically prepared. This is a guy that we will go to war with every single Saturday. And so morale stays high. And a lot of these kids are not going to even consider the portal. A lot of these kids are going to say, I like what's being here in Ann Arbor. I know what's going to be at the big house next season. And I got a guy who maybe is a little underqualified, but if I get to be a reason why we're talking about him as the next big riser in the sport, I've done my job. So I think that when it comes to Michigan standpoint, if you want to keep everything moving in that same direction, you hire a guy like Sharon Moore, case in point over Brian Kelly. The second reason, and this is probably really important for a variety of other expectations. I look at Kelly. Why leave? Why leave at this point in your career? Where you are, you are about ready to have it easily, easily every season. We're talking about you making it to the CFP because LSU will always out-recruit other small small school teams. And what I mean by that is, you know that when you are a place like Ole Miss, you're going toe-to-toe with an LSU. Nine times out of 10, LSU gets the prospect. You get the transfer, but they get the prospect. Alabama. Alabama's got a turnstile right now. We don't know what's going on with Kalen DeBoer. Maybe he will end up being the guy. Maybe he won't end up being the guy. But what we do know for sure is that Brian Kelly's got it made in Baton Rouge, and that's a team that just was able to go ahead and play against Alabama with Nick Saban and win on a two-point conversion. That's a team that got 10 wins, back-to-back years, 10 wins in the SEC. Welcome to the college football playoff. So you're in a spot right now where it's not promised, but it is certain nine-plus wins you're going to the dance. You're going to be one of those 12 teams represented and you're going to have a shot for a national title. And it feels like when it comes to LSU, you don't put them any lower than four. You never will. With Michigan, it's interesting because now you're adding in teams that I think are going to make jumps the second they arrive. Oregon, perfect example. Oregon to me is a top three team going into next year. Versatility-wise, volume-wise, stability-wise, what they were able to bring in via the transfer portal in terms of plug-and-play replacements for Dylan Gabriel and Troy Franklin. And then long-term, you bring over Dante Moore. He's sitting in the wings for a year after starting half the season at UCLA. That's a team that's not going to go away quietly. So is 8-4 and four good enough for Michigan to get in the playoffs? Because there will be years that Michigan will come back down to reality. The undefeated are no longer going to be a case of point. But they are going to be a team that still is flirting with the 9 seed, the 11 seed, the 12 seed in the playoff. Can they get there? 
when you have a Washington team that is going to be better prepared than you expect underneath Jed Fish. You have a UCLA team that could end up doing wonders with an offense led by Chip Kelly. You have, of course, what we see going on at USC. Maybe it pans out. Maybe it doesn't. But at least Lincoln Riley is not sitting on, uh, you know, on egg shells and saying, I don't want to change anything about my team. He's realized this year, I have to make changes. Because if I don't, I'll be shown the door eventually. And I want to be here for the long run. You have it made right now in the SEC. In the Big Ten, there's questions. Not that many. In a place like Michigan, you can absolutely win. But there's fewer questions when it comes to LSU and the SEC. You know that LSU is a big-time brand. You know what they're able to bring in on the recruiting trail, season after season after season. And Kelly, at this point, has shown it doesn't matter if I'm from New York, if I'm from Boston, if I'm from Indiana, if I'm from Montana. I can win anywhere in the country. And I'm winning right now at LSU. I'm taking kids away from Alabama. I'm telling Georgia, shove it. I'm going to take these kids. I'm going and beating up on Texas. I'm beating up on uh, Ole Miss. I'm beating up on South Carolina and Florida and all these other schools around us. Tennessee, everyone's talking about what the balls can do. Yeah, you're going to rocky top your ass to the back of the line compared to me because of what I'm doing right now is nothing short of impressive. I just feel like when you look at a guy like Brian Kelly, he has it made. Plain and simple. He has it made. And if you don't need to go ahead and upgrade from what you already have, why do it? Kelly's got it good. And he's in a really good spot moving forward with the Tigers, especially in a 12-team playoff. Do you feel that same way if he gets hired by Ward Manuel to go up to Ann Arbor? Do you feel like the roster is going to buy into your preachings? Do you feel like even though you are a great coach, you won't have to hit the reset button again like you did at, like you did in, in South Bend, Indiana, like you did in Baton Rouge two years ago? Do you feel like that you're in a good spot? If so, I don't see why you would leave. Brian Kelly's got it good in Baton Rouge. Brian Kelly's got it great when it comes to his future. And the Tigers are roaring right now to a shot of winning an SEC title and a national title. I think it's very far-fetched to see him want to depart a place like LSU. If you have a top three job in a major program, you're in great hands. And to me, it's top three job. In fact, you can make an argument that it is one of the premier jobs in college football, especially with Nick Saban saying, see you later. To hey guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.